gender imbalance. We have talked about feminization or service industry, call center, etc. in the previous modules. But this time a new dimension would be taken up and that is how this feminization creates imbalance, gender imbalance, gender difference. Women dominate service industry for two things. This is a kind of summary or gist of our previous discussion. Number one, they dominate because they are proficient bilinguals. A bilingual is that person who can speak two languages. But uh, the competence in both languages may or may not be equal. Keep in mind. So they are proficient. And being proficient, they sell their voice. Number two, they adopt new identity in the corporate setting they serve when they become part of some international organization, international business. So they acquire a new professional identity. And uh, here researchers point out that because of this new linguistic identity and professional identity, ethno-nationalism goes uh, in danger. It uh, is at risk. Why? What is ethno-nationalism? The national nationalism that is based on ethnicity, that is based on language. For example, if some nation as uh, see the uh, nation states like French, uh, France and then Germany from German, then Dutch. So, all these nation states, they have uh, their nationalism based on ethnicity. So, this ethno-nationalism, when such kind of environment will prevail, this would be under siege, under threat, under risk. So, the main points are two. They are proficient, they sell their voice. And number two, they acquire new linguistic identity. Men have marginal success in these fields. Women are receptionists, secretaries, translators, call center workers, and everywhere in front role services. And this is a gift, this is a boom for them that is provided by globalized economy. Another major factor behind feminization of language related jobs is gender ideology. And what is that gender ideology? The beliefs about gender that female or women are better users of foreign languages. They are technicians of languages. This is a kind of gender ideology. Women have aptitude for language. Other than that, they have liking for learning new languages. This is quite natural with them. They have aptitude, liking for them, interest for them. They have better working memory and they can do multiple tasks simultaneously. They have multitasking abilities, capacity. Call centers and interpreting jobs highly need such skills, all these skills we have discussed. So, women are in high demand in both of these professions. Especially, we would talk about conference interpreters. They are gold collar professions. See, we have listened white collar job, blue collar job, pink collar job. But conference interpreters are gold color jobs. It means they enjoy higher salaries and prestige and privilege. In countries like China, Hong Kong, and other economies like that, which uh, encourage international businesses, which invite foreign investors, and which are sites of multilingualism. And it is in such environments where we need language interpreters.
There is difference between these two terms. Before I move ahead, translators, they deal with the written language. They convert one language, a written language, into another written language. And uh, interpreters, they convert one uh, speech in one language to speech in an other language. This is the difference between the two terms. See, this is a, a glimpse for you how Chinese women work as interpreters, simultaneous interpreters. They are sitting behind uh, two speakers who are speaking different languages and they convert, they translate one language into the other. Women interpreters excel men and they have greater access to this gold collar job. Why? Number one, women use more hedges in interpreting. And look, what Lekuf believed is weakness in women's language. It is proved that it is not weakness. It is strength in their language because when they use hedges, they look more polite. And because of this politeness, they are welcomed in these jobs. Number two. Women don't add or delete anything from the source text. The text they are translating, they remain closer to that. Men make many creative changes when they translate from one speech to the other speech, but women don't. Chinese researchers say that uh, their uh, uh, faithfulness to the source text, actually it has its roots in uh, a social beliefs about women, social roles about women. Women are supposed to be faithful to their family. They, uh, they are supposed to be passive and obedient. So that's why because of these requirements, social requirements, uh, the same uh, traits, the same features are seen in their translating skill. It means global trends. Uh, their point of view has one importance in our talk, and that is that globalization never demolishes local cultural barriers, local cultural norms. It never means homogeneous societies. It always encourages hybridization, hybridization mixing up of global with the local. So uh, that's why sometimes the term localization is also used. Okay. Women interpreters also dominate community interpreting. See, another type of interpreting that was conference interpreting. And this is community interpreting. It is public interpreting in other ways. We find it in courtrooms, in police offices, immigration and asylum uh, 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 tribunals, uh, special courts are called tribunals, healthcare services in hospitals and prisons especially. Here, lay persons, common people, especially women uh, and men, both, they need help of some interpreter to communicate with the officials. Women do not omit discourse linkers, another feature which gives them edge over men in such situations is that when they interpret in community interpretation, they never omit discourse linkers. When we talk, we use such words like uh, firstly, secondly, after this, then, however, these are called discourse linkers. They link our talk with the pre, uh, things we have said earlier and with the things which we would say later. So these discourse linkers are maintained by women and men often delete them. And another thing uh, that is something uh, you can say not common with women interpreters, they never play the participatory role during interpretation. They don't become party. Men often, especially in rape cases, it is noted by the researchers that they take side of the 
criminal. They don't take side of the victim. So they are representing the victim, but they are going against the stance uh, of the victim. So they become part of the uh, case in a way. So women, they don't do so. Do so. As clients are, this is another point. Clients are mostly men in language market, and interpreters are mostly women. So there is an other kind of competition among women themselves. Uh, this competition is of physical attractiveness. This is something uh, strange, or you can say something normal. Uh, we also see it in, in even in Pakistan in many businesses, uh, and especially you see in media these days. So uh, for the same reasons, uh, for attractiveness, for language skills, uh, for their commitment and faithfulness uh, to uh, truth and quality of information, they are hired by Pakistani channels. Even. We conclude that globalized world is multilingual and women are better than men in multilingual skills. Number one, women dominate language market and are highly paid. And number last, global economy has created a reverse type of gender imbalance. This was the point that was focus of this module. What kind of gender imbalance is created now? This is reverse kind of now. Now here, women dominate men. And traditionally, men dominate women. This is gender imbalance.